In some situations, traditional bounding boxes are not the best solution, and this is where RNA bounding boxes comes in handy. This is basically just a bounding box which is also oriented, so we get the rotation with respect to one of the axes instead of just a rectangle or basically pretty much just a square. So this is very useful if you want to fit bounding boxes around objects even more. It could be pocket management and so on as well, where you have different angles where the angle, angle has a huge impact on the analysis that you want to do afterwards. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. Inside the task tab, we can see all the different tasks that we have available. Updatation, instant segmentation, classification, post estimation for key point detection, and then also oriented bounding boxes. We have videos covering with YOLV8. We also have some other video here where we basically just go over it in also the hub. But in this video, we're going to cover it, how we can do it with YOLO11, but also train it on a data set. The total data set with oriented bounding boxes. If you just scroll a bit further down, we can see some visual examples. So it could be ship detection using RNA bounding boxes. So the ships here, they have a rotation as well, or an angle. If you just have a traditional bounding box, it will act like just overlap with the other ships as well. So multiple ships would act like be inside each bounding box. But now we can have bounding boxes that can fit significantly better around your objects. This is really cool, good for traffic analysis, ship counting here in this example, but also just parking management system where everything is not perfect because the further we get out in the camera view, the different perspective view we will get and so on. But again, everything is never aligned to just our camera. So it's very important that we need to know how we can use RNA bounding boxes when we get into such a problem. We have different models, all the nano, small, medium, large, and extra large models, they're all supported with it. This is how we can train it. The dataset format is basically going to be the exact same format as for bounding boxes. We just need to use the other model instead, and it's just dash OBVP. That's pretty much it. We can use it for validation, training, inference with the prediction step in the exact same way as the other one. We can also run object tracking on top of it. You can export it to any of the optimized frameworks as well, just in the exact same way as all the other models. Now let's jump straight into one of the data sets. So if you go inside the data sets tab at the top inside the documentation, we have all these data sets available that you can use directly out of the box with Autolytics. If you scroll all the way down at the bottom, we have this Dota V2 and Dota 8 dataset. So Dota 2 here is basically just for aerial images. Very good example how we can use RNA bounding boxes for aerial images or basically just bird's eye view. CCTV camera is also a very good example. So on where we have like a camera sitting higher up, but it could also be a camera sitting at eye level. And we have objects that could have different orient orientations that we want to capture and do analysis on. Key features, we can read about the data set and all that here, but let's scroll down a bit further and see how we can act like go in and use it. So this is how we can use it. Let's just go and grab this example. So Python, you can also use one command line. It's just a single command. If you specify the data YAML file, it's going to train it and download the whole data set automatically in here. And you can use all the other data sets in the exact same way. You just need to specify the data set and the YAML extension. This will take care of everything. You can use your own custom data set as well. Just make sure that you actually go in and annotate the RNA bounding boxes. And that's pretty much it. You'll have the exact same YAML, data YAML structure as all the other videos out there and ways that we can use also data. So this is a sample data annotations from our data set. So last vehicles, very good one, swimming pool from a top down view. We have different airplanes here and at the part at the gates where it's very important to know the orientation. Pocket management system, just imagine this one here. If we didn't have RNA bounding boxes, we would pretty much just have a bounding box here covering three of the spaces as well. So it's very hard to determine if it's occupied or available for parking. This is probably the best use case. Try to set up a use case around that. Parking management system is one of the best computer vision systems to get up and running out there. So if we grab the code, let's go up here. This is how we can train it. Let's grab the Python code, go inside it. Google Cola Notebook. It's a really good resource for free GPU uh, available. So we can just start a brand new one. You can use the free GPU resources directly in here to train some initial models, play around with it and so on. It's very easy. You don't need to set up the environment. Everything is pre-installed. Only thing is Autolytics. So now we can just connect, make sure that we go up and choose our runtime. 
change runtime type. Right now we have these different DPUs. I'm just going to go with an 800, this is not the pro version, but these are available on the free version. First of all, we need to pip install Autolytics. That's not pre-installed in here. All Torch, everything else is Autolytics. There we go, we pip install it. First of all, you just need to connect to our environment. We'll just take a few seconds and we'll run the code blocks. After we've done that, we can basically just pass in this code. We'll get our Arnold Bounty Box Nano model. So this is the email file if you want to train from scratch. We don't want to do that. So we can just specify that PT and it's going to use a pre-trained model. So right now, just for demonstration, let's go ahead and train it for 10 epochs. We can specify the image size as well. So it's actually going to downscale it. Let's just go with a bit smaller resolution to train faster. We hit train, we can specify the batch size, all the other arguments as we covered in all the other videos inside the documentation. All the arguments can be set in here in the model.train. So you can use all the tasks, all the variations of the models, segmentation, in-segmentation, and so on. The most important thing is just the data set is structured in the correct way. And then it's pretty much just one command line or a few lines of code. Setting up the Kuma stuff, we can run it, and then it will just execute once the other code block is done running. There we go. Now it's running this block of code. We're setting up all the autolytic stuff. And now it's going to download our model. So this is the pre-trained one. And it's also, it couldn't find the images or the data YAML file. So it's automatically going to go into the autolytics assets and download the data set as well. So this is almost two gigabytes. It will just take like 30 seconds here to download. Once it's downloaded, it will start the training automatically. We can see it epoch by epoch. All the mean positions, losses and everything. We can come back once it's done training. And then we can go in and run inference on top of it. But this is how we can train a YOLO 11 model for our init bounty boxes. Really cool. Ton of different applications where it's essential and pretty much not solvable without having a rotated bounty box. So we can both get the corners and we can also get the rotation either with respect to the x-axis or the y-axis. Then that can be used down the line for further analysis for your computer vision application and project. Here we see it's unsealing it now. Everything is downloaded. 6,000 images. There we go. Successfully downloaded. We set up all the training parameters. We run the checks on our data set. So we have 1,400 images here. There we go. We have a validation set, 450 images. So we're just doing fine tuning on a pre trained model. We use our augmentation, set up the optimizer, and now the training has started. So epoch one here, you can see the losses, they're occurring down. We can see the process that we're doing here. Right now, just running our bad size of eight. So just let it run here. They train for 10 epochs, and that's pretty much how we can set it up. Then you can use the models as in all the other videos that we have on the channel. We just run the model.predict, throw in the image, you'll get the results out. Then you can plug it into your computer vision applications and projects. Make sure, go in and test it out. It's very important to know that we can also do RNA bounding boxes with Autolytics. Take your own data set, train it. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.